Okay. So lecture, I don't know, like it called 1B, yeah, 1B. We have uh, uh, January, I think, yeah, 15. Uh, mass for economists. First, a small, um, um, small introduction about the structure of the course because in uh, um, your schedule, uh, every lecture and every class is marked like, like mess for economists. Uh, this is just to um, describe uh, the English structure because in uh, Russian syllabus, uh, there are courses like linear algebra, uh, optimal solutions, uh, differential equations, and so on. And these courses have uh, different names. And in the English tradition, uh, that's uh, just one course, Mass for Economists. But basically, uh, we have uh, groups number one and two, and groups three, four, five, uh, six, and so on. Basically, here you will have a uh, lecture, lecture, let's say, A by Kirill Alexandr Bukin. That will be about differential equations, differential equations. And uh, lecture B by me, uh, that will be about optimal solutions, optimal solutions, optimization, derivatives, and so on. And there will be only one class, 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 uh, class every week. Lecture A, lecture B, and one plus, and it will be, and uh, we will cover both um, uh, differential equations and uh, optimal solutions. Okay, and at the end, uh, depending on your choice, you have uh, um, made uh, a choice of a program and. Uh, you will either take Mathematics 1 external exam, either uh, ma uh, Mathematical Methods, Methods, that one or that one, okay? So this is the structure for groups number three, four, five, and so on. And for first two groups, you have a lot of lectures and a lot of classes. So you have, let's call it, um, so the same, yeah, the same block, the same block, oops. And you have additional lecture, I call it C, uh, by Kirill Alexandrovich. And uh, additional class by uh, Kirill Alexandrovich. And you will cover here algebra, algebra. And then the end, uh, you do either, uh, you do boss, uh, you do calculus, calculus, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember whether it's called algebra or linear algebra. I don't remember. Maybe it's called linear algebra, maybe algebra. So, and in uh, the syllabus, every this class and lecture is called ma Mathematics for Economists. That's like this. So, um, it would be better to have different names, but it's just a tradition. I, I don't know exactly all the reasons. I would prefer different names, uh, but uh, that's like that. Okay, uh, any questions here about why do we have uh, a lot of uh, classes and uh, lectures? Yeah? Sorry, could I add something similar? I really want to yeah, know yeah, yeah. who prepared before. Mm, is there any books or website for recommendation? Uh, uh, yes, 
uh, basically, um, uh, what, do, what do you have about books? Uh, basically, if you look into the uh, syllabus, all books are mentioned there. Uh, I think for my part, uh, for, so I, uh, because I, I'm doing uh, optimization, so I will start for, from my part. I think the best book uh, for uh, optimization, optimization part, I think the best book is uh, Rangaranjan Sundaram, the first course in optimization theory. Rangaranjan Sundaram, first course in optimization theory. Uh, would you please write it? Uh, first, but it, it's better to remember the name. First course in optimization theory. <laughs> and uh, there are some copies in the library, or you may Google and uh, uh, either you buy, either you, I don't know, go to Gen Librosec and download um, first course in optimization theory. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, okay, that, yeah, just a moment. Okay, that's, uh, I think, the, the best book for optimization part. Uh, if you'd like to have a Mm, one book for everything, then maybe it's tough uh, to find such a book, but I think uh, that Simon Bloom uh, uh, is a good uh, book with 1,000 pages. So um, my choice for, for, uh, for, and uh, for other parts, it's better to ask uh, Kirill Alexandrovich, but my personal choice for differential equations part is uh, Demidovich. To solve, just solve problems, problems, problems. And I think it's a very good approach. Uh, but it's better to ask uh, uh, him about uh, his uh, advice. For my part, I think that is the best book. If you'd like one book for the whole, it's, uh, it's more complex to find one, one book for the whole course that is just a collection of three different courses. Uh, but my, my choice, once again, my choice for differential equations uh, is uh, Demidovich. Uh, and uh, uh, for linear algebra, for linear algebra, um, for linear algebra, I will, uh, uh, so I, I'm not teaching that part, but my personal recommendation will be uh, strength. Uh, I think it's called, let me look, introduction to linear algebra. Introduction to linear algebra. This is my personal choice. So maybe it's better to ask Kirill Alexandrovich about his recommendation because he is teaching that two parts. Um, and if you like one book, it's Simon Simon Bloom. Uh, I don't know the name. The name is. In just a moment, I will just. Simon Bloom. Mathematics for economists. Uh, Simon Bloom. Mathematics. That's one big book for all the course, but I think it's less, uh, it's not so good as. Uh, mm, Mathematics for economists. One book, if you like, one book. Okay. Uh, but obviously, you can find uh, many other sources on the web. Um, that, that's, that's not a problem. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's go on. So what we will cover today, 
today we uh, will cover homogeneous functions. Homogeneous functions. Basically, that's our topic for today. It's easy topic just to start with. Um, what is a homogeneous function? We have a function of uh, many variables. Uh, I will uh, say three variables, but obviously it may be generalized to n variables, but my uh, approach is to introduce concept uh, in a particular case, which is uh, almost uh, uh, as complex as a general case. So three variables is enough to understand all the theorems. Uh, and if you'd like uh, to uh, state them for the general case of n variables, no problem. You can replace x, y, z by x1, x2, x3, xn. Okay, what is a homogeneous function? f of x, y, z yeah, is called a homogeneous function homogeneous. Uh, in Russian, однородная. Homogeneous function of degree is homogeneous. Homogeneous definition. It's called homogeneous function function of degree degree d. If uh, when I multiply uh, every argument of the function by t, t will go out of the function with the power d. So f of uh, t, this is better of degree k, yeah, of degree k, if t times x, t times y, t times z, I can take out t out of the function um, with the power k. k f of x, y, z for uh, um, all x, y, z, and t in the domain of the function available. Okay, let's look at some examples of a homogeneous function. Some examples. Um, a function f of f, x, and y is uh, x squared plus uh, y cube divided by 2x plus uh 3y yeah let's consider this example if i multiply every argument by t f of tx ty i immediately get what expression t squared fxy yeah exactly i get t squared x squared plus t cube y cube t 2x plus 3y, I can cancel out t. Um, and finally, I have t squared times original function. So uh, my original function is just multiplied by t squared. So in uh, this example, um, uh, this is function is this function is uh, homogeneous homogeneous of degree degree two. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. But when we say homogeneous of degree two, do we have to specify that this is the only degree available or not the only one available? Do you understand what I mean? Uh, yes, I understand what, what you mean, but in general, uh, with, um, uh, with one exception, the degree is unique. So 
Um, only because the function that is uh, um, trivially zero, yeah, we can say that. Um, so if you go to, if you consider such a trivial case that f of x, y is just zero, yeah. Uh, In that case, yeah, you may say that uh, you can take, you can say that it's homogeneous of degree five, homogeneous of degree ten, homogeneous of degree eleven. Yes, obviously, this function is uh, homogeneous of uh, uh, many degrees. Yeah, uh, you can say that. Uh, let, let's call it h. Yeah, h. H will be homogeneous of degree degree seven of degree i don't know 19 and so on so in this case you're right uh, a function can be homogeneous function of many degrees at once um, but uh, if you forget this trivial function then then the degree of homogeneity is uh, unique. Okay. A degree on the of variables is the same. No. A degree has nothing to do with the number of variables. Uh, in another example, if you have, a, let's say, p of x, y, z, uh, w, that is uh, uh, 2x plus 3y plus 4z minus 7w. I see that I have four arguments. Uh, I have uh, four arguments, but the degree of uh, homogeneity, if I multiply every argument, I have four arguments. If I multiply every argument by t, uh, I will take out t uh, in the power one yeah the power will be one multiplied by p of x y z and w and the degree uh, my function p uh, is uh, uh, homogeneous of degree one okay so degree of homogeneity has nothing to do with the number of arguments i can provide a function of one argument that is homogeneous of degree 12 or i can provide a function of 20 variables that is homogeneous of degree one okay no, no. Okay, I, I welcome uh, your questions. That's the most important thing because otherwise it's a little bit uh, boring. So if you have any questions, just any comments, uh, I'm glad to uh, try to answer them. Okay, let's go on. Uh, maybe less obvious examples are, uh, so you have uh, obviously polynomial when each um, uh, term has the same uh, degree. So if you have something like f of x and y, and that is x squared times y to the power of five plus x mm, three y to the power of four plus uh, x five y squared. So uh, one more example. This function is uh, homogeneous uh, of degree seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah, you have this is seven. That is seven. That is seven. If you multiply f of <clears throat> t x t y 
you will get t to the power seven times original function. Less uh, known, but um, oh, let, let's have an exercise for you. Exercise, exercise for you. Let's consider um, q of x, y, z. That is just a minimum of x, y, and z. Uh, is the function homogeneous of which degree? Just it's for you. homogeneous of degree one. Yeah, if you multiply, uh, if you have three numbers and you multiply these numbers by t, by a factor of t, then the minimum will be multiplied by exactly the factor t. So it's homogeneous of um, degree one. Excuse me, I have a question about uh, one example of homogeneity. Uh -huh. uh, assume a function f uh, for, for, from x, x and y, uh, x divided by y. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's homogeneous with degree zero. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, and uh, if we have the, any real number, what will we do if uh, t will equal to zero? Uh, yeah, uh, I say that uh, for every, uh, so we speak about for, for all when, when the function exists. Obviously, for every function, we need to specify the domain of the function, and uh, if we work in the domain of the function, then this equality should be satisfied. If this equality is satisfied for every possible combination of t, x, uh, z, uh, and y, provided uh, that uh, it's possible to calculate f, provided that the f is defined, then okay. In your case, the function does not exist for. Uh, for t equal to zero, so we do not check whether in okay. in, in that point, in these points. Okay. Okay, I understand my mistakes. Thanks. So just we. Okay. Let's go. On. Uh, what are the properties? One more question. Yes. So um, for, for me now, like finding the degree is very clear, but how can we be sure that it is homogeneous? I, I just don't, I, I don't, I, I think I don't really get the concept of homogeneity. Mm, let's provide maybe an example of non-homogeneous function, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that would be perfect. <clears throat> uh, so, an example of non-homogeneous function f of x y equals to x square plus y. This is non-homogeneous function. Uh, why it's a non-homogeneous function? Because this is non-homogeneous non-homogeneous function. Uh, because uh, when I put t x t y. I would get t squared x plus uh, ty. And uh, I cannot represent this function as a t to the power k. Oh, sorry, x squared plus y. So I cannot represent the result like t to some power multiplied by, mm, uh, by x squared plus, two, plus y. Yeah, now it's clear. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a non-homogeneous function. Maybe one more example of a non-homogeneous function, f of x, y, <clears throat> y squared plus 2xy plus 7. Why is this last example is non-homogeneous function? Um, again, because uh, 7 
when, if if we increase yeah. x to i by the same constant, seven doesn't change. Yeah, the problem is with this term. Uh, I f of t x t y is just uh, t squared uh, x squared plus t squared y squared plus t squared times two x y plus seven. And it's not equal to t squared times x squared plus y squared plus 2xy plus 7. How to check that this is not equal? But I can just provide one point where the equality is uh, uh, not satisfied, p to the power k, and that will be um, a proof. Okay, let's uh, go on. What are the properties? So we have given examples of uh, homogeneous functions, of non-homogeneous functions. So let's move on to the properties of homogeneous functions. Properties. Properties of homogeneous functions. Uh, so first property is uh, linked with a uh, derivative. If uh, we have a function f, if we know that a function f, if function f of x, y, z is <clears throat> homogeneous of degree k and Uh, df with respect to dx uh, exists, then df dx is uh, homogeneous of degree, who can guess, which will be the degree of homogeneity of uh, derivative? K minus, K minus one. one. Yeah, K minus one. For a polynomial, it's more or less obvious if I have something f of x, y, something like x cubed times y to the power of four, uh, f is uh, homogeneous of degree seven. Uh, if I take df with respect to dx, um, then I obtain 3x squared times y to the power of 4. And the df with respect to dx is homogeneous of degree 6. Here it's obvious. You just, uh, on this example, you can just take derivative. In general, this property is less obvious because uh, homogeneous functions may be ugly. Yeah, in, for this example, that's more or less obvious. Uh, and if I have a function like that, f of x and y equals to x to the power of five times cosine of x divided by y, yeah, mm. uh, the function is also homogeneous of uh, degree uh, five. Yeah, because when I multiply x by t and y by t inside cosine, t will cancel out, and uh, I will obtain t to the power of five as a result. And uh, when I take a derivative, the derivative will be ugly. I will have a uh, uh, so the derivative is uh, df with respect to dx is uh, five x squared times cosine x y. Mm plus x to the power of five, the derivative of cosine is sine of x over five, and the derivative of uh, internal function is one over i. That shouldn't be, it be minus sine. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah, you're completely right, yeah. That's homogeneous of 
degree four. Uh, excuse so, me. Uh, can I... Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask that. Uh, so, if the function itself is homogeneous, then its derivative is also always homogeneous. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, we say that it is hom the derivative in respect to x is homogeneous. But what about derivative in respect to y or z? It is the same. Yes, obviously, because it's okay. just a name. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Rename just variables. Uh, so if you'd like to state a gen, so my approach is to use a, a particular example that uh, without much loss of generality, obviously I can state this theorem that if uh, f of x1, x2, x3, xn is a homogeneous of degree k, then uh, df with respect to dxi, uh, sorry, and it, it should be the derivative should exist because some maybe the, fu the function like minimum or maximum is homogeneous, but the, there are problems with derivative. So, and uh, uh, the derivative exists, then uh, df with respect to dxi is homogeneous of degree oof, uh, k minus one. Excuse me, but what if we took function uh, cosine x squared divided by y squared instead of x divided by y? We would homogeneous. Yeah, yes, it's not a problem. Believe me, if you... Uh, uh, we will even prove uh, the theorem. So if you'd like to consider some more particular examples, you may do it if you be attentive and carefully take the derivative. Yes, the derivative of homogeneous function, provided the derivative exists, uh, is uh, homogeneous. Yeah, we will even prove the theorem now, okay? So yes, you may consider example when there are a cosine of x squared over y squared, that will be. Okay, I understand, thanks. Because as a uh, factor, you will have there two x divided by y squared and the drop of homogeneity will be also by one unit. If you will be careful, one thing your example does not contradict our theorem, so it's a perfect example. Okay, let's move on to the proof of this property. Um, so, what we know, uh, we know only the definition. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, may I ask yeah. one question before you continue? Yeah. So, what is the what is the letter for the degree? Because previously you used k, and in the few examples you used d. What should we use? What is the name of uh, letter? Letter man. like degree. Yeah. We, what what, what, the, the degree. what the, was the good name of for a man? <laughs> you may call your son. I don't know Alexander. It's okay. You may call your son. Uh, so no, know. no preferences, okay. right? Sorry? No preferences. No preferences. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. It would be strange to call degree epsilon. There are some traditions <laughs> in mathematics, yes, but you are free to choose any name for degree. So, mm -hmm. no, um, it's a, like a choice of a name. Mm -hmm. So there are some traditions in mathematics like uh, usually n uh, denotes a natural number and the epsilon denotes something that will tend to zero. And uh, you would be uh, very, very non-traditional if you will, will call n tends to zero and epsilon tends to infinity. Nothing horrible, but that's very, very, very strange. But for, from formal point of view, that's that's okay. 
or in, in, in this case, um, it would be strange to call it epsilon, but, uh, but I think any alpha, beta, a, a, every letter is okay. Okay, yeah, so let's you. go, let's move on to the proof. Because we have only definitions of the proof, we'll start with the definition. Uh, start with the definition uh, f of tx, ty, t, z equals to t to the power uh, k, f of x, y, and z. I think for our case, t, k is better than d because when there are some noise or in the channel, t is uh, is very much like d, d, t, d, t. Maybe if the channel of communication is noisy, it's hard to distinguish t from d. And t and k are very different. t will be the multiplier and k will be the um, the power. Okay, so that's uh, that's a definition. And uh, let's take uh, derivative with respect to x. So let's take derivative with respect to x. What can I do? So I will have uh, derivative with respect to x. I will have uh, um, f prime with respect to first argument. Uh, evaluated at tx, ty, tz times uh, I have a complex function, so it will be multiplied by t because I take a derivative of left hand side and right hand side with respect to x, d left hand side with respect to x should be equal to derivative of right hand side with respect to x. And this is a derivative of left hand side with respect to x, and this is a derivative of right hand side. Uh, f prime with prime one means with respect to the first argument x, y, z. One t will cancel out, and finally, I have f prime evaluated at tx, ty, tz equals to t to the power k minus one f prime evaluated at x, y, z, and we may say, whoo, that's our proof. Yeah, we are super hero. We have finished our first proof. Maybe, I don't know what about uh, lectures by Kirill Alexander, but we have finished our first proof in uh, second decade of the 21st century. We are happy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Germany. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, well, uh, there is one property that has a special name: uh, Euler uh, homogeneous function uh, theorem. So that's another property of homogeneous function. Um, So that's Euler, okay. Euler homogeneous, homogeneous. It, it has, this property has a special name, Euler homogeneous function, function theorem. And it says uh, that, um, uh, the function, uh, the function, the function f from c1 uh, is uh, homogeneous of degree k if and only if the function is homogeneous of degree of degree k if 
and only if. So you may check homogeneous function, uh, homogeneity of a function using um, uh, this theorem. So if and only if. Um, x times df dx at x, y, z plus y times df dy x, y, z plus z times df dz x, y, z equals to uh, k times f of x, y, and z. So that's an alternative definition of homogeneity for continuously differentiable functions. Let's check first, and then we will provide a proof. We need a proof in two directions. So well, first we will check, uh, and then uh, we will um, just um, uh, provide a full proof. Okay, so let's let's check. That's um, let's consider an example f of x and y is uh, something like x cubed plus um, y to the power 4 divided by x plus y. Just a moment, I will write my, my tab. Okay. Uh, let's use uh, this approach by Leonard Euler. So let's check what is f prime with respect to x. f prime with respect to x is a 3x cube. Oh, so, sorry, 3x, uh, 3x squared plus a y to the power 4 divided by x plus y squared multiplied by minus 1. Okay. Yeah, okay. F prime with respect to y is just zero plus uh what do we need a here? We need a here x plus y squared. I have four more y cube times x plus y minus one times y to the power of four. And let's check that x times f prime with respect to x plus y times f prime with respect to y will give me, uh, I will just uh, multiply by what I have calculated before. It's 3x to the power 3 minus y4 times x divided x plus y squared plus um, y of 4y to the power 4x plus y minus y to the power 5 divided plus 2 squared. Sorry, not x plus 2, but x plus y. Okay, let's continue, I think. If I collect every term, I see that this is um, plus... Excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Uh, shouldn't it be y to the power of four, not five? I guess I think you multiply twice by y. Mm, I don't see a point. I multiply. Now uh, I have a y times this. 
and in nom I multiply every F term four in y to the power of four. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I think this is okay. But let's see. Okay, we have x plus two squared. We have four y to the power four x plus four y to the power five minus minus one five minus y four x. And uh, I don't like to move to another page. Let me write the answer. I don't like to to move to another page because I will. Okay, I will continue here because we are almost done everything. So I will have three x cube plus x plus y to the power two. And here I will have three y to the power four times x plus three y to the power five. And I will have a 3x cubed plus, I can divide by x plus y. I will have x plus y. And I will have uh, here 3, y to the power 4. And I see that indeed it's 3 times original function. And uh, we are happy. We are very happy. So we know that according to the Euler's uh, homogeneous function theorem, our function f is a homogeneous of which degree? Three. Yeah. Of degree. All right, this is degree of homogene homogeneity of our function. Okay, let's move on to the proof. Yeah, let's go. It's me, Professor, I have a question. So yeah, yeah. if there are any case for example t equal to zero, or we just uh, skip? Or such kind sorry, of sorry, issue. sorry, sorry, sorry. Let, let me introduce some numbers because I can't follow you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know, maybe it would be eight. Which line do you mean? Well, I mean, I mean, because all the calculations are based on constant words, but if there is a case for the unknown t equal to zero, how do we test to do this? Sorry, sorry, I, I don't get your point. Uh, because homogeneous function, the definition, there is a t, and uh, it's squared by k. Is it? No, 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 I don't see your point. Uh, could you refer to some line? We have two equivalent definitions of homogeneity. I have like two definitions. One definition is our old, this is old definition of homogeneity. And uh, this one is an alternative definition of homogeneity by Euler. And the theorem says that basically for continuous um, function, you don't care whether you check homogeneity using original definition or you use uh, um, alternative definition by Euler. Or maybe but it's, but it's, point. Yeah. yeah, he wrote in the chat, like he asks ah. uh, whether t in homo function equal to zero, how to accumulate. Uh, t in homo function, how to accumulate. Uh, so if t, uh, so you consider, once again, we started by
faulty when this is meaningful. If your expression meaningless, if you go outside the domain of function, then you have no problem. So in the domain of the function. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So but in just, here, yeah. in our scripts, you said for all the T, the viable, are we going out of the, out of the definition? And so we just check for all where, where it's possible to check. If it's not possible for zero, we do not check zero. Okay. So yes. the idea is very simple. So if you'd like to like be too formal and uh, include um, every uh, Mm -hmm. So you may exclude, so if you'd like to have a, so you may explicitly, so if you worry about this, then explicitly exclude zero in the function. So may, the main idea uh, is uh, because a function may be homogeneous on the region, yeah? And the idea, if we speak a function that is homogeneous in that region, for example, the function may be homogeneous for positive numbers, and it may be not homogeneous for negative numbers. That may happen. Uh, so the basic is the idea. So you work on some set of numbers. Maybe these are all real numbers. Maybe this is just positive numbers. So for the set of positive numbers, my function is homogeneous. Or maybe your yeah. function is homogeneous for all numbers. If you would like to have a something definition that is specific for your uh, subset of numbers, then you say, I don't know, the function f defined for all numbers except zero is uh, mm, uh, differentiable. And we know that f is uh, homogeneous of degree k if and only if. Uh, the equation proposed by Euler holds. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, for a proof. Uh, pom, 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 pom. So we need to prove two things. So we need to go from all the definition to uh, Euler. Please turn off your microphone if you are occupied by something else. Uh, so Euler's equation. And we need to go from Euler's um, equation to uh, our original definition. To our old definition. Okay, so we need to make two, uh, to prove two equivalences. Okay, the plan of attack is clear. We have a left wing, we have right wing, we will attack from that side and we will attack from the right side, yeah? Yes, clear. Okay, so let's uh, start with our old definition. Uh, I will use two, two arguments because uh, I may write five arguments, ten n arguments that will only add dots in the proof, but I will um, proof, I will write the proof for uh, two arguments, but if you are not lazy like me, you can easily write a proof. You can, you can just write dots in between rename the first argument to x1, the last to xn, and that's all. Okay, so we start, so that will be one, and then we'll move second step. 
So I have all definitions. So uh, f of tx ty is equal to k. Or, oops, sorry, not I mix t to the power k f of x and y. And now we take derivative, uh, derivative not with respect to x, but we take derivative with respect to t. So derivative of left hand side with respect to t is derivative of right hand side with respect to t. Because left and right side are identical. Uh, what is the derivative of the right hand side with respect to t? Is k to the power tk minus 1 f of x and y. And what is the derivative of the uh, left hand side with respect to t? It will be f prime with respect to first argument tx ty times. Uh, because I have, I, I use chain rule, yeah? Because I have a function that depends on an argument and, and the argument is t times x. So I will multiply it by x plus f prime with respect to the second argument at uh, the point tx, ty times, once again, I use chain rule times y. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. And uh, I just, this is valid for all values of t. Maybe we are limited by some t greater than zero. That's okay. But for all t in our subset, we consider. Um, so I plug in t equal to one. Um, and I will have f prime x y times x plus f prime x y times y equals to k times f x y. Okay. Yes, yes, it's okay. So one half is done. One half is okay. So now let's... Second step. We start... Can you move up a little bit? Just yeah. for a moment. Yeah, thank you. That's enough. Okay. okay, let's go back from earlier equation to um, uh, to to our old definition. Okay. Uh, so let's um, first let's solve some simple differential equations. So here we will use uh, simple differential equations. Um, so topics are linked, but in, in, in only some time. So in general, you can call two lectures almost separately, but sometimes they are linked. Okay, just maybe a small preparation. Prepar Preparation step. Uh, preparation step. Um, let's solve the following differential equation. Uh, um, G prime of T uh, equals to um, G prime of T, T times G prime of T equals to K times g of t. It's uh, like a 
Euler's equation for one variable. Yeah, you see that's that's Euler. Let's solve a like a particular case. Yeah, let's consider when I have only one variable. Euler Euler's equation for one argument. That's an Euler's equation for one argument. Let's solve this equation. How can we solve this equation? We can solve this equation. It's, uh, we divide both part by g of t and divide both part by t. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Let's write like t d d d t equals to k. K is a parameter. K times d. Uh, so I have d g d like k times t. Uh, something is wrong. Something is, ah, okay, I see. D t over t. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have logarithm j equals k a logarithm absolute value of t plus some c j equals to logarithm absolute value of t to the power k plus c. So I have j equals to t to the power of k times plus or minus exponent of c and uh, i have one more solution because i have divided by i have divided by my function so i need to check as a trivial solution when the function is zero and indeed, I see that it's a solution of my differential equation. I go back here, and my conclusion is g of t is t to the power k times some constant. Let's call this constant d. And uh, basically, I see that I have one variable, one argument. Then indeed, this differential equation has as a solution. Uh, this is our old uh, definition for homogeneous function of degree k. Okay. We start from Euler's definition. This is Euler's. Euler's. Euler's equation, and that is our old definition. So uh, we have proven the theorem for the case of one argument, but I'd like to prove for the case of two arguments. If I will prove for the case of two arguments, the general case is e easy, but um, the step uh, from one argument to n arguments is uh, crucial. It's not so obvious. It's more or less obvious how to go from two arguments to three arguments, but not how to go from one to two. Okay? Excuse me, can I ask one question? Yes. Maybe it's better to never uh, ask a permission for asking a question. Just ask your question. And if we have no time, I will say, sorry, we have no time. Just ask your question because we, we just, let's introduce this rule. If you have any questions, just, sorry, what is a, I don't know, integral of x squared dx? Just ask your question that will save our time in the future. Okay, thank you, I got it. So, so uh, what is uh, d in the last step? So It's a constant. Constant, yeah. So here, c, so let, let, let's add some small notes where, C belongs to R, where 
where C belongs to R. Uh, here D, what is D? D is plus or minus uh, exponent of C. Uh, and also I include zero. So in the final answer, D is a constant that belongs to R. Okay, thank you. So when I have only one argument, only uh, my uh, homogeneous functions are only polynomials. So basically what, what we have proven, we have proven that uh, if you start from this equation, you will always have something constant multiplied by t to the sum power. And if you have only one argument, these are only functions that are homogeneous. No other homogeneous functions when you have only one argument. When you have two arguments or five arguments, uh, then you have a combine, introduce something like cosine of x divided by two. There, there are plenty of homogeneous functions. Um, uh, but if you have only one variable, then uh, the set of homogeneous function is very, uh, very limited. So basically, uh, one one variable homogeneous functions uh, like t to the power four times seven or five uh, five to t multiplied by t to the power eight and so on. So the set of homogeneous functions is uh, very boring. So you have no cosine, no sine is just a constant times t to or the degree of homogeneity, okay? Okay, are we ready to the next step? Yeah, yeah, go on, please. Okay, our next step is to go from uh, uh, one, um, uh, from many, uh, so we, we have proven earlier, uh, we, we have proven that if we have function of one variable and the earlier equation is satisfied for this function, then the function is homogeneous. Okay, let's, um, uh, let's uh, work with uh, several variables now. 2.2, yeah, we have done 2.1. Yeah. So this is was one, step one. This was 2.1, 2.1, and then we go to 2.2. Uh, so now we have a function uh, that is a function of uh, uh, many variables. Let's pretend of two, of three, I don't care because the proof is uh, now doesn't suffer from loss of generality problems. So we have f of x and y. And we will introduce, uh, so we have um, a function f of two variables and it satisfies um, our uh, equation, not, not our, the earlier equation f prime with respect to the second argument and it's equal to k times original function. So we start from Euler's equation for many variables. And now, uh, we will introduce, introduce one variable function, one variable, variable function. Uh, g of t, and uh, you can guess it will be equal to f of tx ty. Okay, we will introduce this one variable function. Let's write uh, this equation. Let's rewrite this equation as a uh, um, an equation for 
one variable. So we have a differential equation for partial differential equation for a function f, that is a function of many variables. And now we write uh, we write earlier earlier equation in term of g function. Okay, so what is g prime? G depends only on one variable, so I can write g prime. F depends on many variables, so I should specify the index. What do I mean? The, the number of argument. And for G, it's okay. G prime, because uh, it depends on the one variable. Okay, what is G prime? Hmm. You can guess. Haha, -ha. it's exactly that expression. It's f prime according to chain rule. I just apply chain rule. And it's f prime with respect to first argument times the chain rule says me that I need to have a derivative of tx with respect to t, it will be x plus I move on to the next argument, f prime with respect to second argument, tx, ty with respect to y. And so, by Euler's equation, is just uh, uh, k f x y. No, not exactly. K f of what? Be careful. No. G x t y. And more exactly. No, it, it's not so easy. Who can? A can of f of x and y. No. Uh, let, let, let me. Oh, it's k, you, you k minus difference. one. Uh, so, so, so let's look at the difference. You have tx, ty, tx, ty. So if I rewrite these, so let, let, let's put, uh, let, let's make a small break. Uh, let's write the same equation, let, let us multiply by, uh, let me put instead of x, I can put tx. Instead of y, I can put ty. So what do I have? The same equation, f there as a point will be tx times f prime. tx, just replace the point by tx. x replaced by tx, y displayed by replaced by ty. It would read like this, plus ty times f prime with respect to the second argument, tx, ty is k times f of tx, ty. Okay, it's almost what we have, yeah? Uh, so we will just, um, it's like, like k times f of tx, Ty, but I need to divide by T. By T. Yeah, you are completely right. And this is K divided by T times J of T. Okay. Uh, can you give a particular example, please? Of what? Ah, sorry, misunderstanding. Okay, so we have G prime of T equals to K over T times <clears throat> D of T or t times g of t equals to k times g of t. So that's a Euler's, Euler's equation for one variable function. It's exactly Euler's equation for one variable function. And we have completely solved that differential equation. We know the answer.
we know that g of t is t to the power k times some constant d. Okay, we know the answer. This is a solution solution of uh, the differential equation. Okay, because we have solved already. Anyone is with me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. So now, g of t, but what is g of t? g of t is, it, here it is. That constant, that is constant. What does it mean, constant? Constant mean does not. Constant mean does not depend on t okay that is constant does not depend on t what is it? the meaning a constant uh, but it may depend on x and so on okay so what do i have uh, i have g of t equals to t no i have already written that what is uh, g of t is f of tx ty and it's t to the power k times some constant d let's find this constant because this is identity identity we may plug here t equal to one and d is just f of x y is just d and finally bingo Jackpot. F of tx ty equals to t to the power k times d, but d is f of xy. Who is happy? Yes, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, we are happy. We have proven uh, two main properties of uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, homogeneous functions. Let's uh, maybe let's maybe mention some uh, easy properties. Oh, what are easy properties? Something like easy property, something easy because we have done something that is horrible yeah so some easy properties some easy properties so if i have a function f is uh, homogeneous of degree uh, degree let's say five and g is homogeneous of degree seven Um, what I can say about the function d of x and y, that is f of x and y times oh, h, h, was y, h of x and y. What can you say about d? Uh, homogeneous with, with degree 12. Yeah, obviously, it's homogeneous of degree 12. You, you just take out uh, 5, you take out t to the power 7. Yeah, do we need to prove it or it's okay? It's okay. Okay, so d is homogeneous. But if you have any questions, don't be shy. Just say, oh, I don't understand that. That's okay. We know we are studying. There are many things I don't understand. Homogeneous of degree of degree twelve because you just write tx ty uh, t will go out from the first function function with the power five and t will go out of the second function with the power seven and provided that both sides exist 
uh, I will collect t to the power 12 on the right-hand side. Okay, one more easy property. Easy. If uh, f is uh, homogeneous of degree degree five, h is homogeneous of degree uh, five, and uh, d is uh, f plus h. What can I say about about d? It's homogeneous of degree five. It's not homogeneous. Yeah, it's homogeneous of degree of degree five. Uh, okay, just a tricky exercise, tricky, tricky example. Uh, can you provide uh, A, F, H, and uh, D? such that uh, provide f, h, and d such that f is uh, homogeneous of degree uh, seven, h is uh, homogeneous of degree uh, nine, and uh, D is homogeneous of degree seven, such that D equals to F plus H. This is not homogeneous function now. Sorry? So this will not be a homogeneous function. Why not? Because we have different degrees. No, we need to provide. So the question uh, does not uh, uh, ask you whether it's possible. I say hey, it's possible. Maybe if h equal to zero. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if f is uh, x to the power seven plus y x to the power six h is just zero because zero function will be homogeneous of any degree of nine of 10.5 of 2021 and uh, d is uh, x to the power seven plus y x to the power six okay um yeah a zero function is an exception it has any degree of you may say that it's homogeneous of degree five you may say it's homogeneous of degree 10 and so on every statement is correct um okay i think we are happy for today have a nice evening if you have any questions just don't be shy I will drop a PDF into the information system and uh, upload um, a video from Zoom after a small delay. But basically, yeah. is Thank it you possible for... to provide any other function different from zero in this example? That is homogeneous. That is homogeneous of every degree. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you may even prove that uh, no other solution exists. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Boris Boris. Have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank bye you. bye. Thank, Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Goodbye. goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may ask a question. Yeah. Uh, it, am I correct that k doesn't have to be an integer? Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. example. Maybe, maybe it's a good example that if you have a, yeah, maybe it's a good point. Nothing in our definitions required uh, that uh, it's natural number. So you may have f of x and y and square root of x, y. So you should consider positive x, y, and t in that case. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye.
streaming podcast are our I still yeah, yeah. Because for example, if we do for uh, do the functions with derivatives all the time, uh, every time we cut one from uh, from from the function as a square, so it means there will be one point the function itself will equal to zero or equal to one. Sorry, sorry, because I if, don't understand your example. Um, mm. To, 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 to. There are too much noise on the line. Could you tell it again? Yeah, yeah so um, my idea, is, um, so what I want to say is because we, we, we are going to find the der derivatives for homogeneous function. So if we do this progression all the time, again and again, after that, the final function will equal to one or equal to zero. Yeah. And so, okay. so uh, all the consequence if we do this processing again and again, and uh, we will lead to zero and one, right? Okay, yeah, right. And what is the problem? So, because zero is homogeneous of any degree, is homogeneous of degree, let's say seven, it's homogeneous of degree 19.5, it's homogeneous of every degree. So, there are no problem. You take derivative. Uh and the, the final statement will be zero is homogeneous of degree 12. It's true. If you start from, so yes, zero. So if you take one more derivative, it will be homogeneous. So zero is homogeneous of degree seven. You take derivative, you have rights. So it will be zero. So it will be homogeneous of degree six. That's okay. Zero is homogeneous of uh, every degree. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.